Hi all, welcome back to more Combat Commander. Um, using James Wharton's uh, solo bot, um, but the digital version this time. Uh, we're playing scenario one, Fat Lip K. This is going to be on a part two of this. This, this part of the playthrough. Um, I did do a previous quick playthrough of it using the physical components, and uh, we thought we'd try this just to see if it made any difference. And this query where we left things last night, um, got that resolved. James replied to me. I'll just get to that in a second. But this, this, this in itself, and I was thinking, I was thinking back here, the fact when we check for op fire, we check every time a unit moves within the line of sight and range of a, an enemy unit, of the AI, sorry. We check, we click the button that says, well, it's like, it's either plus two range, so two or two or more range, or adjacent. So there's maybe different percentages about how the trigger's going to. But uh, I started thinking, why, why didn't James just have that trigger, in uh, in the physical version of the bot that you checked every time? And I think that would have brought up, that would be much better, because it needed a six to be rolled, the way we were playing it. I think there was slight differences. I think if you were. Was it if you were the USA? I think it was a five or something like that. But um, if it was every time it moved, there, there's a good chance. I mean, you you can cycle through that action deck. It doesn't affect the time of the game or anything. Uh, you know, it doesn't trigger events and all that. So I'm not quite sure why it wasn't just simply uh, that was added to it. And I think if I went back to the physical version of it, that's how I would try and... I think I would try and do it that way and see how it played out. Anyway, so my question was, um, hi James, decided to move across and try your digital and uh, digital impl implementation of your CC bot. I'm still unsure on how Opfire works. I know that you have stated that it is different from the physical game and you check for Opfire whenever a movement point is spent and a unit is in line of sight range of the moving unit. If at any time this check is successful, however, and that's what we got, we got a successful trigger the first time we'd done it, right away, the first time we clicked op fire, it, it, it came up, or, you know, the button that triggers it. Um, I says, so, however, do you then stop checking and just carry out a fire action every time a unit moves in your line of sight slash range? Um, which is kind of how what, what I was hoping would be the answer. Um, and it's a, and then I, fall, I finish it with, just like in the physical game, or do you keep checking with every movement? So, because he does say that you check every movement, but once, you've, once, you, tri once you hit an op fire, do you then stop checking and then just fire every time the unit moves? Or does this have to move and we do a check again? Well, um, like I say, I was hoping for the... The first version of that, and it, it is the answer that I get, so that's good. Um, James says, yeah, at that point you can perform a fire action every time movement point is spent like the physical game. It is supposed to be, to more accurately mimic a face-to-face -face game, and a successful op fire represents the opponent playing an op fire card and activating some units. Good. Yeah, that's what I was hoping would be the answer. He also adds, though, you may want to then perform additional checks if the moving units enter line of sight and range of a unit that wasn't previously activated for op fire. So, well, hang on, and then let me just finish his last paragraph is, alternatively, you can try it that a successful op fire check represents a single fire attack and keep checking after every move. The bot will work both ways, and yeah, it'll work, it just, it's just the click of a button, eh? Or switch it up depending on the bot's posture, who's leading in victory points, etc. And whether the bot should try burn through fire checks to trigger a time event. Um, yeah, I can see what he's saying there, but that's that's then you starting to add a bit of stuff to the bot yourself, isn't it? Which I'm a bit reluctant to, to do. So I, I prefer, although his, his middle part there was you may want to then perform additional checks if the moving units enter line the sight and range of a unit that wasn't previously activated for op fire yes i think that is what i would want to do as well now we activated all these units but let's just say let's just say that we only activated this because we knew this was going to be uh actually that's not the case is it but let's just say this was the only one that was going to have line of sight range um 
Yeah, hang on, hang on. We've already moved. Yeah, that that started in A3, didn't it? I'm going to have to quickly go back and check the video. Because I think what happened is, we activated everybody... No, hang on, sorry. He moves, right? We say, wait, stop. We're going to activate everybody for op fire. No, no, no. I need to roll the dice first, don't I? I need to roll... I need to click the button. So the button says, yes, op fire. In fact, did it not give us op fire with something? Um... Right, what's on the next bit? Let me go back. I've still got this open. Uh, op fire with sustained fire. Yeah, it did. And, and interestingly, this was a machine gun, so I think it got the benefit of the sustained fire, didn't it? So it got we got op fire with sustained fire, but I'd activated everybody when that happened. See, do I, do I activate everybody first? No, I need to know if there's going to be an op fire. And then I activate people. Well, we could really activate that to benefit from the sustained fire. Well, let's just say I just activate that because he's moved from here to here and these cannot see that, right? So my my thinking was I'm going to activate them all because he's going to move, he's going to keep on moving and we're eventually going to see him and fire him. But let's say I hadn't. We op fire we op fire there and then he moves again. Well, this can automatically fire, but we can also then check if these hadn't been activated. That's what he's saying, you could do it that way. We would then check again to see if these guys ought to fire. Um, yeah, I think you would need to know, you need to know if the ought fire is successful before you then decide who you're activating. And whoever you activate needs to have, well, you can't do an ought fire check if there's no, there's nothing with line of sight range. You can't just do that and I'll know the physical copy talked about when a move order was played, you would automatically check, and you could have nothing in line of sight, which seemed a bit, it seems better waiting, because you, there's no point checking if you're not going to be able to see it. They might just move about round the back of the woods and never get into your line of sight. Yeah, so. so that's good, yeah. I'm happy with that. Um, uh, so, yeah, I want to see we move from there to there, and then go, because they had to start around A2, wasn't it? Where's the, that's the playbook. I think we'll move, we'll move two hexes. Uh, yeah, A2 and o, O1, so over this side, A2, so it must have started here. So it moved here, then we clicked the fire button, this took a shot, it then missed, and what I was then thinking was, well now that when we move into here, is this, does this automatically get to fire again? And do these join in because they were activated? Or do we need to check again? Well, James says no. We automatically get to fire again. So, now all these are active, right? And this is in range. Um, uh, range is the middle one. Middle one, eh? one, two, three, four, five. These are all in range, apart from the, the wee dot. But these can all create a fire group for op fire. And I, why is something telling me that can't, or why am I ask, having to ask a question about, can you do a fire group with op fire? I'm sure we've looked at this before. Yeah, we can, we can make one, right now when he moves in that woods hex, we can make one fire attack against that hex with any of his units that were activated for op fire at any point during the same move order. And remember, when he first moved there, we activate all these for op fire, even though these couldn't fire. As long as one unit can fire, you, you can activate others. Um, so, and that, that way, it's it, I can automatically fire on this, with this guy. Whereas if I hadn't activated that and he moves in there, yes, this automatically fires, but this would then need to do another check. So, it's better to do it the way that I've done it, I think. Um, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I've looked before about fire group. Yeah, there's fire group there. Um, I, I think the problem is that, I mean, an op fire is just a fire attack. So I think it re, ref, ref, refers you. <laughs> so I'm going to get that out. Uh, I mean, there are A33.3 op fire exceptions. No, hang on, sorry. A33.2 op fire procedure. Um, I 
yeah, sorry, I, 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 it's the exceptions bit that was that jumped out at me there. Um, well, no, 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 all fire procedure. Because the first bullet says, you, you, you know, if if you can do it, if some, if something, if it's successful to try it, right? And remember, we're looking at two player, two player rules there. So it says generally, when the active player is performing a move order, he should count all his units accumulating movement points expenditure on each hex as it's entered. Each time such an expenditure is made, the inactive player has the option to call out wait temporary halt movement. If he does, he may choose to do either of the following. Either or both of the following. So, either or both. So, yeah, he can play another fire action card if there's other units to be activated. And then he can also fire fire attack with units that have been activated for op fire. So, yeah, you can do both. But, that, that that's what James is saying. This could automatically fire. If we hadn't activated these, we could check again for an op fire to see if he's got another fire card in his hand. And then if it, it does trigger, then these get to fire. Or you can do it the way I've done it, which make, makes more sense, I think. So it says, if he does, he may choose to do either or both of the following. Play a fire action from his hand and activate one or more units, one or more units to, act, to fire at that hex, exactly as if he were activating units for a fire order, which is 014.1 and 020.1. Uh, 014, what is that? That's just general rules. Yeah, don't even really look at that. So 020.1 is talking about suspected targets. For a fire order to be announced, at least one of the activated units must have an enemy unit within its both its line of sight and range. And then when we look at fire groups, two or more activated units may fire together by combining a fire group. I just wish that it had taught I mean, could you not find if you search for fire group? Op fire, op fire group. Maybe if I search for that, I might just get the confirmation that I need. Not that I do think that I really need this. I think it's, I think it's okay to do this. But yeah, I can't. I, I don't know what search through threads, but I came across the first thread that I, I looked at. I thought I might have the information where it did seem to be suggested that op fire, can you can create a fire group if they're. If they're adjacent, in line of sight and range of the target, they can all join together. So, that's what we're going to do here. Um, now, that, that's him spent, he spent one movement to go in there and an R2 to go in there. Was he just, what, was his intention just to stop there? Can't remember what our plan had been now. I think it was just to get them down into better cover and be able to, well, to be honest, that's not in range of that, is it? So anyway, so they're gonna they're gonna opportunity fire. I don't need to do a roll for that. Now we're gonna use Um well we're better using this guy to attack actually. So now this could cross the fence, I think. Um this could give the hindrance of the fence. Uh, yeah, well, do you want that? Because that fence isn't adjacent to either the attacker or the defender. And the fact that it's going through multiple fences doesn't matter, I don't believe. Um, and the rest, I mean, they, uh, they all have range and line of sight. That one's possibly going through the field, but the field and the fence are both a hindrance of one. So we're going to get a hindrance of one, but he's going to have five, six, seven, and then we're going to add these two. So seven, eight, nine. So it's a nine attack. Um, uh, well, hang on, nine, and then the hindrance knocks it down to eight then. Is that right? Um, so is there any cards? Well, we need to roll on this first. So I think it's eight for now, before we roll, before we roll. Is that right? Is it right? So then eight nine and then minus one for the hundreds. I think that's I think that's right. I think hundreds hundreds just takes one off the fire power, doesn't it? Yeah. Who's the rules? The beside you, girl. 
I'll just quick check. Hindrances, fire attacks, 0.23.2. With the line of sight, um, and any ordnance firing piece on, and the target hex is hindered, that shot's fire is reduced by the largest such hindrance. Yes, okay. So it's eight. So we're gonna roll a dice on that. Uh, roll, make an attack roll. So yeah, I um, also meant, oh, a couple of things to talk about. You know how we got the, is it the boar sighting came up? And that's when I pick up a defender. Well, somebody had mentioned us to James and then, um, yeah, he's realised that that's a glitch, uh, shouldn't shouldn't be there. So that's fine, we can't do the boar, we didn't do the boar sighting anyway. So um, obviously in his next, next time chance he gets to make an update, maybe that'll get changed and taken out. Um, also, the defence roll, because I remember I was asking defence roll and draw dice, I mean, why, what is the difference between these? Well, defence roll, I think, takes into consideration that you could... What can you do with defence rolls? Is, is there not... There's certain things that you could have come into it. I want to say you need to be a def the defender in the scenario for it to trigger. Anyway, that would automatically trigger it, whereas draw dice will just draw dice. It won't consider. So this, But this is not a defence roll. This is an attack. So he's going to draw dice. So here we go. Uh, oh dear, right, that's bad. Um, so he gets a double one jammed. Um, because there is a machine gun firing here, isn't there? So the double one takes out of 10, which is bad in itself. The fire attack still goes on as 10. Um, I think this machine gun is going to break though, isn't it? Uh, so hang on, I'll check that. Yeah, so page 12, 020.3.3.1, jam, jammed trigger. If a fire attack roll results in a jam trigger, all firing weapons break. This does not cancel the attack and otherwise reduce its effectiveness, other than the fact that jam triggers are found on extremely low rolls. Yes. So, yeah, that's uh, why machine gun's going to break, unfortunately. Which is kind of bad. He needs a uh, 5 six to fix that one. I wonder if these are different. I mean, I use the same white machine gun we had in the last. Are these dials, these numbers different, depending on random machine guns? There's, a, there's another one here. No, it says five, six, seven, eight. So I wouldn't have thought that would be. Yeah, there's another one there as well. Okay. So that was kind of bad. Well, it's doubly bad, Drew, really, isn't it? Because we've only got a 10 attack now. Um, they don't have a concealment card. Or sorry, we don't have a concealment card. So we're just going to let that, let that go at that. So we need to draw... Um, now our, our morale's 8 and we're in a 2 defence effect. So we're sitting at a 10 anyway. But we do need to draw for defence. So here we go. We get a 9. So all good there. Uh, no issues. That's that op fire done. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that guy's clearly just going to stay there. I mean, unfortunately, he isn't in range. And he could move in a here. He can't move there because that's crossing. It's an actual one across that fence. But he could move into this hex, then getting in range. But he's going to get op fired again in the open. So I don't think we want to do that, do we? Right, um, well, we've got all these other units activated to move. But remember, op fire is now active. So anything that moves in their line of sight is free game, if you like. Um, oh, I uh, made a couple of comments on... Oh, no, that's going back, isn't it? That's fine. I, the, the, I left the comments in the header uh, of the video anyway. That was only part five of the last bit of the place through with the physical stuff. Um can't remember what it was. I was it was talking clearly about I was talking about the benefits of moving group moving units together. Well clearly when I found out that to benefit from this two extra to the movement factor of this, they have to move together. So that's clearly a benefit. And um, now I made a mistake in my previous place through of on more than one occasion I think moving this guy thinking he had six 
movement in this case and moving them separately from the leader and maybe ending up the leader in a different hex. If I get, if I want that two movement, I've got to move them together and they've got to end in the same hex. Um, what was the other thing? Uh, yeah, actually the other point was quite relevant to what we're doing just now. Um, when I talked about activating all the units and then, again, I wasn't, I still wasn't that sure on how Opfire worked. Um, but then I talked about if a unit moved and, and the op fire trigger, then I could just say, well, I'm not going to move these guys. Well, I don't believe that's true because if you activate somebody to move, they've got to make at least one movement. I mean, yes, I could just scot them up. I mean, we know we know that if I move this into line of sight range, they are going to have a shot at it. But I still want to get into position anyway, so, you know, I, I might need to just take my chances here. So let's see how we're going to move the rest of these, knowing that, well, I tell you what, it's a cute thing, is this, this weapon's broken. So he now doesn't have that 8 range. So the best range he's got is 5 from this guy, but you can see 1, 2, 3, I mean, he, he can hit in any of these. Um, they're clearly going to be, but can his buddy behind, or even have 1, 2, 3, 4, well, they can actually. Even him, he can fire. Remember, he doesn't need to be using the machine gun. So he can fire at range 5 himself. So we could have a, a fire group here of, again, 7, 8, 9, firing into these hexes. And so there is a risk here. But I, I, I don't know how you, how you go about this. Um, right, let me, let me pause and have a little think about it. Oh, I think I've got to watch. We've been, I think I looked at this last night, actually. That has line of sight right through... Now... Well, no. You're not going to have line of sight to that hex or that hex. But you are to the one in the woods at the back there. Uh, it's just I was, first of all, considering moving this guy. So I move him down the road one to get the extra one plus one movement. As soon as I move him into there, that can actually fire. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, no, it's out of range. Okay, that's fine then. So, I think I will just move him around the back. So, I'll move him into there for one. Actually, I don't think I need the, to get the bonus of the one movement because I, I can't. Well, I'll show you the now. So, one into there gives me an extra movement point. So, I've got four left. One, two, three, and then I'm stuck because um, I've only got one movement point left. Um, uh, uh, you're not a better ending them up in there though, Grant. Yeah, you know what? One, and then I've got four left. One, two. Uh, now, if I'm moving to D2 there. No, it's not in, it's not in line of sight. No, no. Yeah, no, that's fine. Because I've got the one. So remember, stacking doesn't, um, doesn't matter until the end of the turn. Um... So yeah, I think I'm better with him in there. So where am I going with these guys? So I mean, he's he's got a range of 10 with that machine gun, but I, I liked how it ended up the last time where we had them all all down the, the woods here and they were all able to create a fire group. That seemed like the plan, eh? Well, that's my plan. <laughs> it's maybe not great, but... Um, so moving that machine gun though, it's minus two plus two. So he's got four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I mean, or either that or one, two, get fired upon, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, th I think I maybe will be taking a chance for that then. Because I, I, I need to kind of create something. I think I'm maybe going to be moving something down in here. Right, this guy here, I'm going to go one, two, um, three, four, I think. I don't know if this is silly. I mean, maybe the fact that op, the op fire's triggered, I should just be avoiding all this. Uh, I'm just not experienced enough with the game, man. Eh? That's always your get out. That's always your get out with us, these things. You've not played it. Um, 
So, I mean, they are, they are going to attack with... Now, I suppose... See if... See the fact that he's got... He's got a line of sight and range. One, two, three, four, five. And he's coming across the fence. But see if these guys... These guys are not getting the hindrance for the fence because they're adjacent to it. But I guess you've got to add the hindrance. The thing is there, though... That means there's no point using him to fire because he's given a plus one and then a minus one. But hold on, he he's at the back. He's going to be firing through the fence as well. Uh, well, yeah, you're better. Well, no, you're. If you add them both, though, you're only getting the one hindrance. So you're adding a plus two to get a minus one, or you don't add them at all. So that's a plus one for both of them. So it's still worthwhile using them. I'm assuming that's how it works. Yeah, okay, we're going to fire. Um, now, he's got no movement points left as well. Yeah, I was wondering maybe, maybe tracking when I'm moving these units, tracking them with a dice. Um, and I should have left the dice with that guy last night, but I'm pretty sure that's where they started. So. Right, so the fire here is going to be five, six, seven, plus one, plus one. That's nine, but there is hindrance. Both these guys are coming through this fence. So I think it's an eight again. I think that's right. Uh, attack hindrances. Yeah, if the line of sight from any non ordnance firing piece in the target's hex is hindered, that shot's fire power is reduced by the largest such hindrance. Um, yeah, I think. I think that's fine. So we've got an 8 again to start with before we roll the dice. Okay, so we roll again, so draw a dice. Oh, better this time. Right, 11 on top of the 8. That's tasty. Oh, excuse me, 19. <coughs> right, different story this time. So this guy on his own in the woods, um, now with no concealments, I've got a white wounds card, so just in case, that's something. Uh, hang on, hang on. No, there's nothing about a, a weapon breaking that would trigger anything. No, no. I've just got to remember that. But watch for certain triggers. Okay. So, 19. Right, he's got 8 plus 2 in the woods, so he's got a 10. And he's going to draw a card for defence. And it's only a 7, that's 17, he's going to break. So, that does make me look stupid for doing that then. Maybe some of you have already said that that was stupid. Um, or, maybe not stupid, but not not sensible. <laughs> Probably not the right thing to have done. Right, okay, well we're going to... Well, here's here's the thing, now I'm, now I'm going to move the guys... Hmm. Actually, I should have moved them first, shouldn't I? Because what if something happens here and I can't move them out of the hex? Because if they get fired in that hex, because you can see this, this movement was four and now it's down to one. So if I had, if I'd only spent one movement point, no, well, no, couldn't, couldn't have been one. If I'd only spent two movement points moving this guy into there, I would have normally thought I had two left, but now because he's broken, I've only got one movement point left. Eh. No, I don't. I won't have any movement point left, then. What? Hmm. That's why I should have moved these first, because they, they're. I'm intending moving them, and they're there. But now I'm a bit scared anyway. After that, I, I want to be able to get them here so that I can fire though. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but if we end up with these guys all moving in there and getting stuck in there, I'm then going to be overstacked. So, yeah, that that was daft. I should have moved them in first. But then again, I wouldn't have liked that 11 die roll on these two. Uh, so we're going to change our mind with that, and we're going to move these two into there. Remember, he gets a plus two because they're staying together. So it's a plus two, but a minus two for the, the weapon anyway, for his movement. Um, 
So movement was four. That's two into there. That's kind of rubbish though, isn't it? Although this guy being hit means that we can't have a link through him anyway because his range is only one. Right, and I'm going to move the other two movement into there then. That's them finished. So they did not come into line of sight or range um, of these units for op op opportunity fire. Um, and that guy, yeah, that guy was in that hex, right? So that's fine. So the last one is this, and I was going to move it down to here. It's going to get a plus two for the woods, but a minus one for the road. Um, I do want to say, though, that this guy won't be able to partake. No, that's that's hitting the edge of that woods. So he, he'll not be able to join in. And that means there's no real point this guy joining in because he's going to get a plus one, but a minus one because the fence. So it would just be these guys. Mm, uh, no, I don't know. See, this, this fence here, is, it, is that class is adjacent or would that give hindrance? Uh, I don't know. This is a similar issue to had another game on the other side with Bocage actually when it went down the spine of the I mean I, I know if I'm firing over this part of the fence it's not hindered. But this could be considered to be part of that. You know that corner's on that the edge of that hex, so does that hinder it? Well, let's just hope I can get away with this and leave that question in there for the guys that that know. Would that would this hinder the fire? I'm just gonna leave that question there. Would this this fence here hinder a fire into that hex? So hopefully the die roll doesn't matter. So I'm not there's no point firing with this, like I say. Well, because that definitely brings... Well, hang on, there would be a point firing with it if we... If that is hindering it. Uh, well, can you not just fire with both and does that not balance it out anyway? Well, not really, because... If I fire just with this and this doesn't hinder, that's 7 I'm attacking with. If I fire with this as well, that's 7, 8. Oh no, that does work out. It works out the same, doesn't it? So I will fire with this guy. Was he okay though? Um, yes, I would say just. It's very close to the, the tip of that. But I would say yes. I still wouldn't have mind that question answered though. If this was just firing alone, would this class as hindering fire? Hindrance. But what I'll do is I'll attack with this as well. So we get 5, 7. Plus 1 is 8. Minus 1 for this one coming through the fence. Whether this one is or not. Please leave the answer for me though. That, that'd be good to know. So 5, 7, 8. Minus 1. So it's, it is 7 the attack. Uh, right, we've not moved the unit. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, so are, are we going to do that then? Yeah. I think I need to get something... That's got a range of six as well, so one, two, three, four, yeah. Let's do it. So he moves one, and then two, and then obviously the alt fire triggers. Now I still do have two more movement points left, which I think I should start marking with something. So he's, he's got two movement points left. Uh, but we're gonna fire with seven, and the die roll is gonna be the draw dice. Ah, it's gonna be a three, so 10. So this guy should be alright this time, I think. Now I'm annoyed I didn't make the move with him though. Because <laughs> if that was going to be the die roll, that would have been fine. Um, so 10 into this guy. His morale's 8. He gets plus 2 for the woods. That's 10. <coughs> Excuse me. 10. And uh, minus 1 for being in the road. So it's 9. So yeah, he's fine. But we still need to draw a card. Uh, and he gets another 9. So 18. So that's fine. So that's the tackle where he does have two more movement points left. But I think we're going to sit there because 
at least this can fire. You know, they've got a bit of group fire there, but six, six fire factors. I like I say, if they could have, if this, well, if they can recover this, do I have a recover in my hand? Oh, I do. Well, we can, and we've only done one act, one order, so there's a chance of recovering that guy. He's in good terrain. He's got a six. Yuck. The morale's pretty rubbish, isn't it? The Germans is much better, I think. In fact, I want to say, does the Germans one not? That stays the same, so it's a seven to a seven. That guy starts with an eight, and he drops to a six when he gets hit. So the Germans have got much better chances at recovery, haven't they? Yeah, I dare say that, yeah. It's a better fighting force than that. The Russians is more of them, but maybe not quite as good a fighting force as the Germans. Yeah, I think that's how, how things kind of went. Uh, so, yeah, no, I'm not going to move that anymore. We're just going to stop there. Right? And then that's, so that's a move order over, but like I've just realised, well, you know what, we've got, ah, no, you can't fire though, Grant. Because you've activated everybody. We've activated everybody, so we can't have a fire, well, certainly not with them. Nah, the other guys are in the line of sight. But we can play recover, and the recover doesn't, doesn't target units, it targets a player, so we recover our target and ourself. Um... And so if we had any suppressed units, uh, just checking along there, there's nothing broken or suppressed here either. Uh, so suppression would just get removed automatically. But none of that. We do, however, want to try and rally this guy up. So he's got a six plus a two for the, the terrain. Um, gives us an eight. So we need less than an eight. He's got an eight. Does that mean that means he's suppressed as well? Does it not? If you get equal, is it or is that? I think it is. Uh, so morale roll, wasn't it? Um, yeah, hang on. Yeah. So rally roll, page fourteen zero twenty two. Sorry, not zero. O twenty two point three. Rally roll. Rally roll can have one of three effects. So yeah, I know what's coming here. On a broken unit. If the, if the row is less than its morale, rally it. If the row is equal to its current morale, it becomes suppressed and remains broken. If the row is greater than its current morale, there is no effect. Yeah. Damn it. Okay. So that went bad. So not, as, not only is he broken, he's now suppressed as well. Which makes things even worse. Right, well, I've, that's me carried out two orders. I still do have another three here. Um, Two fire cards, but remember we can't activate any of the units up there, and the other ones are at range, so route, yeah, there's nothing that really route, so I think we're going to leave it there, and draw back up to our um, five cards, so, yeah, that's fine, so we draw another fire action, and we're kind of waiting for a recover, really, and a move action, okay. Right, it's back over the boat. Well, I'm at 38 minutes. I don't, I don't have much time today, and I'm back to work tomorrow, so it's going to dry up a little now, but I've... Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I get plenty of time off. It ticks, ticks along, and then I get loads of time off again. But... Um, should I do another German action here? Seems a bit of a short part. German turn. Uh, I'm not so sure what I'd be wanting to do though. I think I think I better leave it for now. Actually, what time is it? Eighteen thirty-nine. Oh no! Come on, let's 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 do another one. If it gets too much, I might just stop. It's not even 40 minutes. Right, so back to the Germans. Going to be have reveal next order for the AI. And yeah, I was able to just leave this tab open on my tablet and everything's hunky-dory, so that's good. Reveal next order. All oh, right, here we go. Nothing simple, eh? Move, but first assault fire, then smoke grenades. 
Um, right. Uh, I also think I came across a comment when somebody talked about smoke grenades were only used by uh, what was it box something box range maybe. Um, smoke grenades. Uh, well, that's a that's an action, isn't it? Smoke grenades. Yeah, because remember on the physical, it doesn't seem to restrict you, but it says smoke grenades um, may only be used by a unit with boxed movement. Well, actually, the Germans do have boxed movement. So that's fine. Assault fire. Each assault fire action allows a single fire trigger to be made. Um... Oh, move, but first assault fire. So have I got have I got to do these things first? Where's assault fire? Uh, assault fire may only be played if at least one unit currently activated to move has both boxed fire power. Well, the Germans don't have that. Uh, yeah, and an enemy unit within its current range of line of sight. So they can't they can't do the box fire, they can do the smoke grenades. Select one smoke marker at random and place it in or adjacent to um the unit's hex, provided that hex is not water terrain nor only contains a blaze marker, isn't it? Um Well I suppose I suppose I want to move first. Does the smoke marker have to go adjacent? Does it? In, in or adjacent to it. Okay. Well, I don't... I'm not sure I want to move these guys anyway, really. They're kind of set, well... Nah, no, he's, he's fine. He can be involved. He's not, not in good terrain, this guy, though, but how do you get... You know, I want that extra firepower. So I don't think I want to move these. So if anything, I'm just going to move these. And I noticed in my first playthrough, I put two of the squads down here, and I've only left one down here. So, yeah, that's not going to be great. Um, I think, maybe I just want to get up to this hex here. So I've got to, I've got to... Have I got to place the smoke grenades before I move then? It does say move, but first assault fire, then smoke grenades. So I suppose you kind of do... So I one smoke marker at random, place that in or adjacent to that unit's hex. Provide that hex is not... See, I'm, I'm wondering if I can do it while I'm moving here, or do I need to do it before I move? Smoke grenades may only be used by a unit with box movement and must be played while that unit is activated to move. See, I, I think I can suit myself here though, can't I? I mean, the, even though it's saying move, but first, assault fire. Does assault fire have, have to happen before you move, maybe? No. It needs to be played if at least one unit currently activated to move or its weapon. Oh, does the weapon have... Well, the, the light machine gun's broken. It does have box firepower, actually, their light machine gun. But it's broken now, anyway, so... Um, well, I'm, I'm just going to... I guess I'm going to just treat this as, I think, as a two-player game here, I would... I would have a move card, and I'm playing the move card, and while I'm making the move, I'm then going to play the smoke grenades when I want to play them. Yeah? I think that's fine. I think even if I had, I was able to do the assault fire, it doesn't seem to say... It doesn't seem to say it has to happen before, before you move or anything like that, so... Not quite sure why the wording is they are bought first. So I'm going to move these guys. Um, now they're going to have a movement of five. 
well, in actual fact, once we move there up the road, that then increases that. So we've still got five left. Well, he's still got five left. But they're moving together, so they're going to have to end in the same hex. So he's still got five left. Um, see, I, I, I don't think I want to move into here. Right, so I was just I was just double checking about smoke there. So smoke affects the entire hex into or out of or through it, including hex sides. And the smoke uh, it's a hindrance of one to ten, depending on what smoke marker you draw. Um so yeah, you well if we if we put it in the same hex as us it's going to be a hindrance. Mind you, does that mean we could maybe take a wee chance here and move? I'll move one more in there. So I've got four movement left. Now, if I put the smoke in there, uh -huh. yeah, so I'm just thinking if I put, if I put the smoke into that hex and then move into it, if they wanted to fire on me, they would... The hindrance affects firing into the hex, doesn't it? That's what it says in there. It says into, out, over, through. That's the wrong one. Smoke affects the entire hex into or out of or through it, including hex sides. But I've got to remember that if I wanted to fire on him, I've got the same... Disability or whatever, no. So, is there a point in that? I mean, there might be, because if I'm, I'm kind of want to be defensive against them and just sit there until the smoke goes away, and hopefully then I get the first shot at him. No. Uh. Or, I mean, I've got four movement left. I could go into there and... Nah. I think I'd be better just going into that hex. Right, I'm going to I'm gonna do this. You know what? I'm, some of these things I'm not sure what I'm doing, really. So I'm going to draw a smoke marker now, and I'm gonna, we're going to do smoke grenades into, that, into the adjacent hex. We've got a seven, so that's quite big. And then I'm going to then move into that hex. Now, he could opportunity fire right now. I've got two movement points left, but I'm just going to stop there. He does actually have three fire cards, but here's the thing. Hundreds is seven, so he's going to be firing with five only. Yeah, no, the hundreds is going to take it down to minus two, so he can't fire, can he? Oh, okay, maybe that's good. Maybe that was a clever... Thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're all cringing. <laughs> right, let's let's go for that. Okay, so that was his first order. Right, I will need to get moving now though. Um so let's finish his turn, reveal next order. So it's another move. I don't think he's gonna move then. Because well these have been activated to move already. And these I don't think we want to. I mean, yes, I spoke about the fact that he's not in a great hex, but they're, they do have a fire group going here. Uh, no, no, that doesn't work. I was going to say, can, you, can he not be in here? But then then there's no fire group between that. There's no connection. There needs to be somebody in between. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave that. Okay, well that means we're going to just skip that order then, but it'll, it'll help increase the threat. I think if we look at this log thing, it, it tells you, goes through some of the things that were on the physical version, but um, I guess I'm just going to go with what's been said here. So we're going to skip this order, because we're not wanting to use it. Is that right? Yes. Right, order skip, threat increased, a real next order, and you should say I'm finished. Yeah, okay. So that's uh, the bot finished. 
we're going to come back uh, next turn to the the Russian again. And uh, they've got, what oh, I say, three fire cards are right in a move. Then they, they could certainly move some of this about again, bring this down, or adjust it slightly. Get Maybe this guy can get in there and this these can get in here. And then we've got that. And I noticed from the last playthrough that it's clearly better having this guy with a machine gun because he adds plus two to the machine gun. Then if you get the card, what is it? Is it sustained fire? Yeah, there it's there. Because I was using that in the first playthrough, but I was using it and the leader wasn't beside the machine gun. So you're going to get a plus two for that, a plus two for the leader. So that's plus four on top of the six. That's ten. And then if you've got three or four adjacent that can be in part of your fire group, that's that's a good start, isn't it? So, yeah, so I think we might try and move these into position uh, come the next uh, turn. But um, I better leave it for now. Um, yeah, and I won't be, won't be back later tonight because I need to get off to bed a bit earlier. And, um, yeah, but that's been that's been good and just shows you the first op fire we checked for, it triggered. Um, and even some of some of the things coming in there seem to trigger, so could it be I was doing something wrong with the with the the physical parts? I don't know. Um I've got a few parts out there now. I thought maybe someday would have chimed in. Um Oh, I got a comment from somebody or oh, who was it? I haven't replied to it yet. You know what, I'll come back to that next part. Um it was Yeah, no, let's let's try and read that and give him his <laughs> You know, the, we'll give him the whole quote that he was making about that. It was just comment about the how the AI wasn't really doing very well and things. Um, I'll, I'll I'll speak about that next part. Okay, I'll get away for now. And uh, um, tomorrow is actually quite unlikely that I'll get a chance, but I'll be back when I'm back. Okay, cheers. <laughs>